never use laundry detergent again. Use these like magic crystal Magic balls. crystals. I like yeah. crystals. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to our very first podcast. I'm Denise Wild. And I'm and Jennifer Moore. <laughs> and we still have not named our podcast, but basically we are two sewers, crafters, creators, and we love talking about making things. And we just thought it would be great to share that with everyone. And, you know, Jennifer and I have great conversations about things that we like, things that we're into. And we just thought that others might enjoy that as well. So um, we can give a bit of our background, but there are lots of similarities that Jennifer and I have, which is why we get along so well. So Yay. And you know what, though, I feel like you and I, we have a lot in common, but we also have some lifestyle differences that I think make it, yes. you know, Totally. So, it's like personality. Yeah, something for everybody. Yes. Our personalities are similar, but the but the the context of our lives is different. Yeah. I'm a lot lazier than you are, Denise. I'm gonna be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is too funny. Yeah, I I enjoy being lazy, but I I wouldn't title myself lazy. Like, you wouldn't title yourself lazy too. You are I, I'm not lazy, but I, I'm the type of person I wanna plan my life around how to make it the easiest I can, I guess. That's I don't smart. know. That's I'm like, that's yeah. smart. <laughs> like you travel a lot. I barely leave the house. You know, <laughs> it is, it is what it is, but you know what? I'm okay with living like an, like an 85 year old woman. So oh my gosh. that's that is my dream. My Actually, transformation is complete. <laughs> I want to, my dream is to decorate my house. Like I'm an 85 year old woman. I want it like, like lilac flowers, oh, birds, yes. wallpaper, like oh, doilies and lace. And <laughs> are you, how many cats are you going to get then? Cats, no cats, no cats. Okay, I actually hate cats. You hate cats? Do you have a dog? I've never told you this. I had a dog. Um, I had a big Rottweiler, and he passed away. Oh, I love Rottweilers. You know what? I barely like my cat right now. So uh, (laughs) she's she's. I'm gonna be honest. uh, She's on thin ice at the moment. (laughs) Was something I cannot mention, but it was very bad right before we started this. Uh Um, Uh So she's probably not gonna be in the picture right now because she's. She knows that I'm not real happy with her. Does uh, she have like a time at like a doghouse version oh of like a cat version of a doghouse? She'll be good. All right, so she's nine years old. She will be good for the longest time. Like I was even saying this morning, I was like, she's been she's been so good lately. And then she was saving it up. And then she'll bust something out that she's never done before. It's <laughs> totally random, but it's very bad and usually involves her not using a litter box. So Uh-oh. let's just leave it at that. But it's Uh-oh. uh yeah, I don't know. Well, so Denise, uh, and also this is an international podcast, which I was thinking about. You know, you're in Canada. I'm I'm here in in the good old USA with lots nice. of, uh, you know, uh, in the South, lots of classy gas stations and you know, Walmart. Classy and gas stations. <laughs> classy gas stations. Yeah, that's where I usually hang out. I'm not at nice hotels like you are, Denise. I'm <laughs> I'm buying yeah, boxes. This is not my normal. Yeah. So I am, I live in Toronto, in the suburbs of Toronto, and I am in Vancouver right now for a home show, uh, and I did some daytime TV this morning, so um, I am in a hotel, and I checked in last night, I booked on Hotwire, and I checked in, and they were like, we have some news, we have upgraded you to a suite, and I was like, oh, cha-ching. Upgraded you, wow, that like never <laughs> happens, that's never happened to me, does it, has, does it happen often when you're traveling, or? It happened a couple times, yeah. actually like a handful of times, like not never, but not all the time. Time, but yeah, this was a very nice surprise. There's a kitchen, Ooh. there's a dining room. Like, holy I just, cow! Whatever, yeah. All right, so you're living large in there. That that's your crafting space for today. Is that? Yeah, exactly. Well, Craft, I, all my crafts are in the suitcase. Actually, all right. Talk about that about what I did this morning. All right, cool. Well, uh, you know, can you share? A, how about we? You you know, you share a little about you. I'll share a little about me. We could talk about what's in your suitcase. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a regular thing. What's in the yes, suitcase? Yes, what's in your suitcase today? You could do hotel room tours, do hotel room crafts. Something um, like okay, so I don't know. I'm sure all of this stuff will come out as we talk over time, but I'll give kind of a brief synopsis of my background. Um, so my name is Denise Wild, and I am Canadian. Hello. Um, 
Uh, my professional background is in magazine editing. I used to be an editor for the largest fashion magazine in Canada and a uh, beauty editor and all that kind of wonderful stuff. And, uh, but my passion has always been sewing. I learned how to sew when I was 13 and um, basically haven't stopped since. When I was working in the magazine, I, everyone knew that I was the girl who sewed. So I would always be making my own clothes. I started making clothes for others. And then people started asking me to teach them how to sew. And I thought, oh, I would love that. One day when I'm an old lady and when I've retired and when I've finished my career in magazines, I thought um, I would love to teach other people how to sew. And as soon as I had that thought, it just wouldn't leave my mind. And... Um, so I thought about applying for a part-time job to teach at my local fabric store to teach classes. And I was like, well, they'll never hire me because I was an editor. I was always traveling or doing events, like basically evenings and weekends were, were a write-off or just unpredictable. So I thought, well, how, I'm gonna, how am I going to do this? And um, I thought maybe I'll just start teaching classes in my apartment and um, one of my good friends, we were running regularly at the time, we were doing morning runs. And so I would talk to her about my ideas. And I said, I really want to teach sewing classes in my apartment. And she said, well, actually me and my two best friends were looking to take sewing classes and I'm in charge of finding out where we take them. So if you want to teach us, we will be your first students. So um, I put together a curriculum, like I thought, okay, if somebody is sitting down in a sewing machine, they've never touched it before to, I want them to make a garment and know how to read a pattern. What will that look like? And I created an eight week course and they became my first students. I then had friends calling, strangers calling, people saying, you taught my sister, you taught my coworker. Um, and this was all in my one bedroom apartment in Toronto. So I had sewing machines everywhere. Basically when you, I, I sectioned off my living space. So when you walked into my apartment, people said, this was in 2004. So first of all, people were like, oh, you're very young. I thought I was going to take a sewing class with an old lady. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and then um, they would also say, do you live here? Because I had none of my personal effects out. It was just like tables and sewing machines everywhere. So um, eventually I had to move into a commercial space. I hired instructors. I eventually had three locations in Toronto. I had 3,000 square feet in Manhattan. And I had the largest sewing school in North America. So 10 years later, I sold the business to f and Media, which was the largest craft publisher in the world at the time. I don't know how they're doing now since publishing is just poop. But um, I sold the business um, and I continued to um, represent companies, do a lot of TV. Um, so now I kind of do um, brand representation and spokesperson work on um, for different craft, um, DIY, uh, home sewing, any kind of uh, any kind of thing that can be like domestic, and that's kind of what I focus on. Oh, and um, now <laughs> there's more. But wait, there's more. Um, so now my team and I have created sewing classes that we take into elementary schools. So right now we're focusing on the Greater Toronto area. Um, we do them as an in-school workshop. So an entire school. Event went back when I had the sewing schools, we would have, you know, individuals come and take and sign up for classes. And now we go to schools, we bring 15 to 20 sewing machines, we bring four to six instructors at a time, and we circulate through the entire school from kindergarten to grade eight. All the students come in, they all learn how to sew on a sewing machine, and they all walk away with the project. So it's great. So my basic goal, my life goal is just to spread the love of sewing and making and crafting. Um, you know, it just making things brings me so much joy. So I'm trying to share that with others. I'm so I'm so excited to hear what you're doing with the schools, <laughs> because I think that's you got to get them while they're young. Uh, I think you've got the right approach. Is it hard for you to like, are the schools pretty receptive to you guys? Like, I was just kind of wondering how difficult yeah. it is to get into a school. Cause I know they're, they're kids. So there's like security right. issues. I was just wondering, like, yeah. is it, have they been so very open to you guys doing that? 
Yeah, it is difficult because there are school boards or obviously, you know, police checks and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like the, there's a lot of red tape to going into a school and every business wants to get into a school because yeah. of the audience. But when they hear about what we're offering, it is just, they just are so receipt receptive to what we're doing. Um, the great thing that I find that you will totally know is because, you know, unlike a math class or a science class or a history class or a gym class, when you have an entire group of students in there, there's always someone or multiple people who feel like, I just don't get it. This isn't for me. I'm not good at this. Whereas you take those same students and bring them into an art class, a sewing class, something creative where they're making something, all of a sudden, they all have success. They all accomplish something. They all learn something. It's the true arena where everybody's starting on the same playing field. You know, we also, uh, my husband who I do the programs with, his background is in uh, athletics, mentorship, and um, also, also business and sales stuff. But um, he had a business that focused on mentorship through sports. So that's the other thing that we've incorporated into this business is mentorship. And we're trying to help bring positivity and confidence and pride to these students. You know, it also, sewing helps with mindfulness. Like they're just, as soon as we, well, at first when people hear, well, this is kind of a common conception, right? Everybody who doesn't sew or who isn't super artsy, when they hear about sewing, they're like, mm, old lady, like, oh you yeah. Head. They're like, oh, I don't know. And, and they like, don't, I don't think they understand how modern these projects are. The totally. fabrics have changed. It, it doesn't look like it did in the fifties for sure. Totally. Oh my God. We have so much to talk about with all of that, with the changes in sewing too. Right. But I think that's kind of the biggest thing that um, that people see, oh, wow, you know, it's really done in such a unique way. And it's something that all of a sudden the kids are, um, you know, they're creating something, they're taking two dimensional fabric and making something three dimensional, something that is useful, something that's practical. Like it's just, it's completely different than what the schools are offering, which is sad. I wish home ec was still in. Did you, did you have home ec when you were in school? Yes. Yes, yeah. me too. Maybe we're some of the last people. I don't know. I totally think so. And actually, because I grew up in Vancouver, when I moved out to Toronto for university, people, nobody who lived out in Toronto had taken it. Wow. Is, so yeah. so it was a Vancouver, so it was in your area, but it was not in... Yeah, uh, I think I think they dropped it out of Toronto and Ontario even farther, like even longer ago, so... Well, I really, I really enjoyed home ec. I had a good teacher, um, you know, and we made, the one thing I do remember though, is that the sewing machines we used, I don't remember what brand they were. Um, they were not easy to use. So I remember feeling a li like, and that's the thing I think I would want to get across is that you need, a, you need a machine that works well, because yeah. if you don't, that's what you remember is like, wow, that was really difficult. You know, the yeah. bobbin kept getting jammed. I couldn't get it right. We did some oh. hand sewing and the hand sewing I really liked. Right. Because um, we made like stuffed animals. But when it came to the sewing machine in that class, that's the thing I remember being like, and I think that really put me off to using a sewing machine for a long time. True. You sad. know what? You and I have talked about this before. For sure, the sewing machine is a hindrance if people yeah. are not getting a great sewing machine. And if their first experience or their third experience is not on a good, easy to use, you know, like mess free sewing machine, it definitely people think that it's them or they think I hate sewing, but it's really a like, bad or they think it's them. Like I can't yeah. sew like it's, you know, this is not working for me, which is unfortunate because, you know, once you get over that, once you find a machine that you like and you can use, it's, it's really not hard after that. Like, there's things to learn, but it's very, I feel like it's very doable. Yes, for sure. Well, that's an awesome story. And I really hope, are you, are you hoping to bring it to the States? Maybe I think that'd be Yes, cool. of course. Of course. Well, I would love to do, you know, the Caribbean. <laughs> well, if you need an instructor in the States, I would like to volunteer. Yes. Perfect. Oh my gosh, is, that mine? is that mine? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe that's coming. Maybe it's my cat. I don't know. Who knows? Who it's yeah. She's doing something evil. Who knows? But okay, uh, that's... So let's get to your background too. All right. Your background is amazing. It's, and yours, you it's are... not as it, it's. I will say it's not as inspiring as you. But uh, okay. So I didn't start sewing until really after thirty. 
Um, I had done home ec, but again, you know, I was a little bit like scared to do it. Um, so I had just moved to Atlanta and my husband and I lived apart for a year because he was still in Florida um, working on our old house. So I had moved here and I was alone for a while and I wanted something to do. So he suggested I start sewing. So I got a machine. I didn't, I'm one of those typical cases. I bought it, didn't touch it for like six months, you know, sat in the corner, whatever. So he came, you know, and figured it out and then taught me. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. And, and I would like to say to the people out there that don't feel like you can do crafty or sewing type activities, you can, I am, I, you know, I'm not only, you know, like that hair club for men, I'm not only a founder, I'm also a customer. Um, I'm not naturally crafty. I'm not an artist by any means. And I really never thought I would do something like this. So if I can do it, you can do it for sure. Um, That's perfect. Yeah. That's and my husband, my husband's way more domesticated. Um, he's a <laughs> chef. Um, and he also could sew, but even before you know, he figured out the sewing machine like it was nothing. So he's very good at figuring out how to use things. He yeah. taught me how to cook. He taught me how to um, sew. Um, he can also do nails if you're looking for so or in floral arrangements. Stop it. Yeah, his mom was like a nail tech. So he would help his mom. And then she was also doing like floral arranging. So he did a little bit of that. So he can Stop do it. like a... So he can do like acrylic nails. I don't get my nails done. So, I don't. Done. so yeah, it's, it's a little... It's definitely breaking some gender stereotypes yeah. there. Um, so I really got into it. We started watching all these YouTube videos. Um, one of the first people I discovered was Jenny Doan of the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Great on YouTube. I learned how to quilt from her, how to make a baby blanket. And then I also discovered Mary Fonz, who is the daughter of Marianne Fonz, the legendary quilter. And I liked her approachable videos. And then I also found you through a website, your website. And we, that's, I think I contacted you because I was like, you know, sewing is so much fun. Um, at the time I was, uh, I used to work at CNN and that's when I started sewing. And um, I think the reason I decided to start like a website and YouTube channel called Sewing Report was because one, I didn't meet a lot of other people my age or younger who sewed. Like nobody at work sewed. Like they were all very curious about it. But again, they had that stereotype like of what it was and that's not what it was at all. So I really wanted to try to, you know, again, I'm a storyteller by nature. I love making videos. I like writing. So I thought, you know what? I would really like to start trying to just break some of these perceptions that are just totally wrong. And the only way you can do that is by sharing information, you know, sharing stories about real people who do it, about what it's really like. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm really excited that we're doing this because, you know, hopefully we can reach people who might be curious about sewing or someone who doesn't do it at all, but just wants to listen to, you know, the two of us talk. I, you know, I don't know. Um, so I'm really into it. I like to quilt. I like to make clothes. Um, I like to home deck projects. I like sewing bags. I recently started getting a little into dollhouses, which is a little strange since I don't have children. So that is a little creepy. Um, that's the thing, like you and I have become friends through this whole thing and yeah. uh, we, you know, we have some things in common, but we also like have very different lifestyles. So I yeah. thought like when you mentioned doing a podcast, I was like, that would be cool because you know, we're alike, but we also are two very different people yeah. and hopefully someone can find one or both of us they can relate to. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're a busy that. mom. I have no children and I'm lazy. So Oh, stop. Uh, no, I really. <laughs> Denise, I wear Hello Kitty pajama pants every day now, and um, oh, that also, sounds like my dream. Yeah, I quit. Um, I decided to quit my job a few months ago, which uh, the jury's still out on whether that was a smart decision. But I'm having a great time and that's focusing full time now on doing stuff like this and producing YouTube videos. Uh, that's, so that's about it. And I like what you said about you know you not considering yourself to be a crafter or oh, no but you just kind of stumbled into it and yeah. you have so much joy in doing it. And I think that's something that will be really relatable to a lot of people. Like you don't have to be a sewer to have interest in, you know, a technique or, you know, I don't know. We're going to talk about a lot. Exactly. And it, once you learn it, like my stuff doesn't look crappy or anything. Like it looks pretty good. And it's amazing that someone like me could do something like that. You just yeah. need to like 
I think it is, is you need to learn, learn from other people, learn from, there are, and there's so many excellent resources on the internet. Even if you're like me and you never leave the house, there's a YouTube <laughs> video for you out there somewhere or a crafts class or a blog that will show you what you're missing. Yeah. Or just how to do like simple repairs and mending and that kind of stuff, right? My dad knows how to sew. He actually, so my stepmom doesn't and my dad does. So any repairs or anything like that needed around the house, he's always the one on the sewing machine, pulling things out, getting things fixed. So nice. And you know, I think that's the other thing. Um, you know, there's this whole stereotype that it's all women. <laughs> um, I think a lot of these younger guys in particular you know, they don't, they don't care about those gender stereotypes. So I do feel like, um, our community could get more men involved, more young men, you yeah. know, with the right approach. And also like, I was asking a guy, I was like, what would you be interested in learning to sew? He's like, exact. He said exactly what you said. He's like, I would be interested in learning how to fix my clothes. You yeah. know, guys don't like shopping for clothes. They want to keep the stuff they have. He's yeah. like, I would love to learn how to fix a split seam or replace a button. But again, videos that are a little more gen, some of the videos you see are like very feminine. Right. So I yeah. feel like if, if they did it and maybe have a guy do the, you know, kind of like Rob Appel with man sewing, the man oh, sewing okay. channel. Yeah. Like something that was a little more geared towards them or at least not super feminine, like yeah. no pink set and, you know, frilly stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. Says she with the pink cover on her mic. I like that. <laughs> I know, I know. So we'll see. Uh, we do have a few male viewers over here, so I don't know. I guess it doesn't bother them too much. We'll no, see. I totally know what you're saying. No, that's good. Okay, so wait. Before we start talking about more fun stuff, um, you totally breezed over your professional career background. Jennifer is a superstar TV producer. So well, yeah, now, now ex TV producer, uh, you know, so nobody cares about me anymore. No, I'm just, TV. um, yeah, I worked in, uh, so I worked in TV news, which is definitely not a profession that has a lot of crafters in it. Although I do know a few, um, yeah. I know a, actually a guy who was a news director in West Virginia that I worked with, he left his news director job, which is like the top spot. Basically he's hiring reporters. He's making all decisions. He left his job. His name is Matt, and he owns Bearwood. Uh, it's called Bearwood Company. He left to pursue a full-time furniture-making business and is doing really well. No um, way. Oh, I think I saw of, you mentioned him on your... Yeah, he's really awesome. And you know what? And it's one of those businesses where a lot of... There's a lot of turmoil in the business, and a lot of... It's not a very lucrative business, for sure. Um, so a lot of people end up leaving or experiencing burnout... The hour, as you know, because you do TV a little bit, the hours can be a little crazy. Like you had to get up like super early this morning. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those businesses. It's very stressful. It's kind of thankless, especially if you're off air like me. Like I wasn't, you know, everyone assumes that if you work in TV news, you must be a reporter. But there are so many other jobs in there. You Like, as you know, you've been in TV studios. Like there's so many people that never get any credit. And you have no, and nobody knows what they do. Like I, uh, one of my other jobs was assignment editor, which um, if you work in PR and media relations, it's a job you should definitely know what that is. Um, but people have no idea. They don't even know what TV producers do really. And there's a lot of different forms that. So I did work at CNN in Atlanta for about five years. Um, and I, again, I decided to leave. I think, I really think digital media is the future. And I really wanted to put, um, you know, be able to focus on that and see if I could build something of my own. We'll see. Uh, maybe this podcast can be part of our empire. You know, we don't, we don't know, but I, I had a good time doing it. It was a, it was a good experience and I learned a lot. Um, and I got the opportunity to really talk to and get to know people working in TV news all across the country and in Canada. Uh, I, I was, I, I became buddies with the people at CTV and CBC. They were I mean, like, honestly, the stereotype, and I, I have to say the stereotype about Canadians being super nice is 100% accurate. <laughs> I think Canada's awesome. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Well, one day we're going to get together and, and uh, you can come visit me. <laughs> All right. Yes. And I know you're dying to visit. I know you're dying to visit Atlanta and go to a Waffle House. And uh, I am all of that. I've actually been to Atlanta one time and loved it. The food was the best. It was my best favorite food trip. Um, really? Actually, you like the food here? Yes. It's amazing. Right. Oh, so good. 
Well, we'll go to a gas station and I'll get you a, we'll get you a, a, they have a two for 20, two 22 hot dogs special at the quick trip. We'll go there. We'll get some hot dogs. I love hot dogs. Oh, hot dogs are so good. They do have good hot dogs at that gas. Uh, I so I like them. gas station hot dogs, street meat, gas. Yeah. I'm not picky about my hot dogs. I like them. They're very good. I mean, the longer they bet on those rollers, the better. <laughs> no, or not really. <laughs> it's a little scary, but you know what? They have so many preservatives and chemicals in them. You know, we're not going to die or anything. <laughs> yeah. Although, did you see that study that it's like super processed foods will give you cancer? I'm like, tell me something I don't know. Like, I was so surprised to see like, that on the news. I was like, that's news. I'm like, yeah, it's like know? that's, I thought we all kind of knew that in the back of our heads. Like, it's not. That was so funny. I thought the same thing. I'm like, really? Like, they did a study on that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The same thing. That's funny. I don't know, but oh, which brings you know what though? So you and I were talking about something earlier. Um, there's this video going around. So I'm obsessed with Mashable, anything on Mashable and uh the Daily Mail. And Mashable often has these like viralish videos that they share. And the, one of the recent ones was the new trend, the which is Definitely an indication that the unicorn trend has gone too far. Um, it's the new trend of, they're called fat unicorn cakes. I love this. Okay, keep talking. And they scare me to death. Like, so it's like a real nice looking fancy cake. But then the baker makes it like they put like this super fat unicorn, like kind of laid over top of it. And they take away part of the cake to look like the unicorn's been eating it. And these things frighten me. And... I was thinking about it. They look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, like a little bit, like if you made it into a unicorn. But you like them, so you like them, and I'm scared of them. Like, yeah. So Jennifer posted on Facebook, like, "Oh my God, look at this trend!" I'm like, "Scare anybody else?" And I was like, "This is the best thing ever!" So, like she said, super fancy, expensive, like really, really nice cakes with a giant unicorn on them. But the unicorn has this stuffed belly and is like. (laughs) like drunk on the cake and like half of the cake is gone. I thought it was the best thing ever. And you were like, this frightens me. They need to put a bottle of wine in the unicorn's hand or like a like a paper bag and like a bottle of liquor. But then he's just drunk, not he's drunk on the cake. <laughs> he's like wino unicorn or something. And and the one of them had the unicorn with like tacos in its hand. Like, like what, do you have the munchies? Is he high? Like, a, you know what I mean? Like... I don't know where the, like, some of these things, I had a lot of questions about the the baker. I don't know. It cracks me up that all of a sudden it's a trend. Like, like, like it's one thing for somebody to do thing? it, but then, like, how many people are doing this? Oh, yeah. And like, they have, like, five of those cakes. I'm like, are they all from the same baker? Right. Or are they, like, you know, I, I mean, it's good for the bakery. Like, I, if I had a bakery and I was making fat unicorn cakes, I would be loving it because, again, <laughs> people would be ordering Cakes. Now you have a a daughter, right? So how old is your daughter? You. She is three and a half. She's going to be four soon, and um, she is wonderful. About <laughs> six months ago, I would have told you she's horrible. Does she like <laughs> unicorns? That's the important question. <laughs> She is not, if anybody doesn't have children, I must preface this with like, we went through terrible twos and then three majors. So I actually think that my daughter three is great. Major. What, what does that mean? Well, it means they're worse than terrible twos. Oh. They just have personalities. They have attitudes. They know that they can say no. It's like the terrible Uh-oh. twos are bad. And then three major is worse. And then apparently there's Effing fours. Wait, so you got you're making it sound very appealing. I know. Doesn't Effing everybody four. want to have children now? So. Oh my gosh, she's so cute though. Like in the photos, she looks adorable. So I don't, I don't post all the other photos. Post the other. What are like like are some what are some of the bad photos you get of her? Like okay, so sometimes for anybody who doesn't have kids or toddlers, uh, sometimes I'll just get screamed at for no good reason. Like I'll just get like yelled at, screamed at. It's the end of the world and it's it's just honestly I tell people I'm in an abusive relationship like <laughs> she tells me I did this that you wrong. can't leave or file a restraining order exactly. again exactly everything man if I do it it's it's not done right like no matter what I do it's been wrong I get hit I get screamed <laughs> at bitten punched do you need counseling wrong. Denise do you <laughs> but I can't leave and then you know and like 10 minutes later, she's like, I love you, mommy. I'm so sorry. And Dude, goes, that is like an abusive relationship. Cause like, I'm so sorry, babe. Like I won't, it won't happen again. Wow. Totally. 
if it was if this was a man who I have no lawyer. idea you know yeah, I'll, I'll fill you in it's uh, what is she so what kind of stuff does she do three-year-olds like Okay, so branded stuff like Shopkins. I don't know if you've seen these. You would love Shopkins. Oh, I, I, you know what? I learned about Shopkins from a coworker and my mind was blown. And I yeah. was thinking that company that makes them is making a killing. <laughs> their cost of production must be nothing. I know. Like they, those totally. things cost like what, two cents to make or something? Probably like a hundredth yeah. of a cent to make. And yeah. Like yeah. they're so small. Like, yeah. That's, that's the thing now, like make something that's plastic and small and charge people. And then they do series, series one, series two, so that it's limited edition. Like season, and they, I've seen the shopping carts and the shopping baskets. Yes. So I, every time you go cool. to the store, there's something new that your kid doesn't have, then you want to get it. Yeah. Basically anything that's small and cute and branded, like my little ponies are back. She's into that. Oh um dolls basically she loves anything doll she loves anything where she can be domestic like she likes pretend shopping carts pretend cash registers tea sets like she yeah she's so cute oh like does she like um does she watch a lot of youtube i know you mentioned yes, i you know mentioned that a little bit before because sometimes you you were saying some of the cartoons on there can be not like quite what they appear. Yeah. So, um, so we try to limit it obviously, but she does get to watch YouTube videos. She, there's a YouTube kids. Um, so it's generally good, safe content. Um, and most of it is totally fine, but sometimes it's little kids and little meaning like six, seven, eight, 10 up who are making these videos and I'll overhear them and they'll have their dolls yelling at each other and like, nah, 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 and like in our house, we don't talk to each other that way. Like we don't yell, we talk respectfully, you know, to her, to each other. So when I see that, it is just crazy. And you don't, you know, a lot of times she's listening with her headphones, so I don't catch it right away. But you don't know. It's hard. It's really yeah. hard. I, I imagine it's very hard to monitor every single thing she watches. Yeah. There it's, are a few it's, where I've had to say like that we don't talk. I don't like you listening to this person and we don't talk to each other and we don't talk to others that way. So don't listen to it. And sometimes she'll cry. Sometimes she'll be like, okay. <laughs> or she'll, she'll scream at you <laughs> or throw a live at me. <laughs> That's so well. It's like, it's like drama queen city there. Like, oh, yes. oh yes. I had no, wow. I had no, I had no idea. So, and we the don't have any, high, but the lows are the like, lows are very low <laughs> and we don't, we don't have plans to have kids. So uh, that is not something I think I will experience except through your stories. So I appreciate. Yeah. Maybe I appreciate that. Or a story. Just yeah. Like so, so yeah, so yeah, so I'm probably, and, and that's the other thing, I'm probably one of the few people who's so, who's married without kids. Like, <laughs> there are some single women I've seen, but most of the people who are married all have children, like, and a lot of them have, like, five or six kids or something. Oh. So, like, you know, some of these, you know, bloggers in Utah, like, I'm like, man, you guys have, like, a whole, like, softball team or something. I don't, I don't and now it seems popular to have, like, for a while it seemed like, especially in America, it was kind of popular to have like two kids, you know, like right. a boy and a girl. And, done. and now it's like, people are really starting to branch out and have like four or fives. I think I know a couple of people with like five or six kids, wow. you know? So it's my, one of my professors in college had a lot. I don't even know how many kids he had, but um, he would come, his family would eat in the dining hall on Sundays. <laughs> and he literally have kids like, like <laughs> hooked to his legs. Like, like they would, like I don't, like it was crazy. Um, and his wife was Korean, so like the kids were adorable, um, you know. But he would literally have like kids hanging off his arms and his legs. And I'm sure they're. I think they're older now because um, I graduated a while ago. They probably still are hanging off hanging his off. And legs. But man, yeah, like there are people like now. It's very popular like to have a large family, which is yeah. kind of cool, you know. Like I, I enjoyed watching that. Um, tw what was it like the 19 and counting show until they had the. Until they had the the the, the scandal, yeah, I know. the scandal. Well, I just saw a preview the other day for one of. I guess they're doing like spinoffs. All these spinoffs, yeah. yeah. But I'm and like, yeah, I, I, and I, up until then, I was like, you know, they all seemed to be kind of together. You know, like the kids were well behaved. You know, right. like productive yeah. people. You know, I, I mean, I guess every family has its issue, has its problems. So, yeah. you know, I know I did enjoy that show. You know, I you know I, I dug that they made their own laundry detergent and. What you know. they did? Yeah, they made like all like they they had a lot of you know little things about how frugal they were. Um, 
Oh. You know, so they made their own laundry detergent. Like they cooked, they had like a commercial kitchen. Like, what? oh, and uh, I think they made their living because off of commercial real estate. So it oh, was no kind way. of nice that at least they had a lot of kids, but they were able to spend a lot of time together as a family because, that's, you know, yeah, a lot of the way really they made their living was kind of passive, which I thought was kind of a cool thing. Yeah, that's really good. So, um, okay, let's get back to the DIY dish detergent. Yes. That's something awesome that we can talk about. And actually, I have to tell you something. This, I mean, this isn't a plug for the for this particular company, but I have you ever heard of Crystal Wash? Crystal Wash? No. What is that? Is it a dish detergent so, that I? No. This is yeah. like a non non laundry detergent. Basically, I in our household we have stopped using laundry detergent. It was this Facebook video that popped up and it looked, it was like, never use laundry detergent again. Use these like magic crystal magic balls. crystals. I like yeah. crystals. It's cr these crystals that apparently oh. like alter the pH of your water, make all the dirt and odors and bacteria fall off. Does it work? All right, I'm going to look it up. So I saw this, I was like, oh, this seems like a bunch of whatever, but I started reading. Are you looking it up now? Oh yeah. You crystal wash laundry. Okay. Yeah. It was a Facebook video, oh, and I probably spent an hour reading through all the comments. Trying like, to figure out if you were going to spit, like, buy it or not. Huh. But and there were so many people who said that it works. I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to try it and buy it. I bought one. I bought a set for my sister, and it is amazing. We oh. have had, like, these different, like, tests that we're like, okay, we'll know it really works if it cleans this. I like how this thing says it can remove blood. Like, I'm like, how many of your clothes have blood stains on them? <laughs> you know what? Honestly, like, after you I killed someone, not, like, are you trying to, like, clean up? I don't know. I'm not at all affiliated with the company, but it is so good. What did you see? Your eyes just went. I'm Looking at the balls, so do you have to refill the balls, or is it like... Oh, so you buy them, it lasts like a thousand washes, so you, wow. every 30, now this is the weirdest thing, every 30 washes, you have to put them outside for fresh air. <laughs> That sounds like a lot of work, Denise. I don't know. I know. It's not though, because you just like you throw your clothes in the thing and throw the balls inside. So lots of people were like, I'm from Canada, we don't get sun like or I'm from Vancouver, like we don't get sunshine. What happens then? But they're like, Oh, you can even just put it on your windowsill and just crack the window open as long as it has fresh air. Crack it's wave. So <laughs> That but is... it totally works. Honestly, get them. They're so good. And I'm all about, I'm trying to take our house because as soon as I had my daughter, I'm like, I don't want any A little more eco fret you know, better yeah. world, that sort of thing. Exactly. So we're trying to transition product by product away from like chemicals and crap. And obviously, you know, everything is bad for us. So. All right. I, I, you know what? They are a little pricey. But they but last. For they last. Washes. They're sixty. I don't know. They're sixty bucks. I don't think my husband's gonna go for that. Like he's gonna be like, you can get a coupon code. They they were giving coupon codes, yeah. and they, honestly, they're so good. They really, really, really work. I'll have to think. That's a that's a pretty big investment. I will have to think about. <laughs> Like, I wish if they were cheaper, I'd probably go for it right away. It's a hard, it's a gamble because you don't yeah. know, but that's why I'm telling you, everybody, buy Crystal Wash. Buy Crystal Wash. And we are not, although Crystal, Crystal Wash, if you'd like to be a sponsor of this podcast, yeah. please reach out to us. You know, Absolutely. I'm just teasing you. All right, let's see here. It doesn't have a price listed on the website. I, w I went on the Amazon thing. I think it's 69 or 99 and I paid, I paid Canadian. So when you convert that from US, it ends up being like a thousand. Okay, it's, all right, it says it's 59.99 on the Crystal Wash site and you get one free essential oil. Ooh. And that's I the know. other thing. Everyone I know seems to be into essential oils and I'm still not yeah, sure. I'm still not sure like what what that's all about. Like- me too. I'm still not sure. I mean, some, like, I can understand that some oils help with some things, but a lot of it, I feel, is just... Like, people have, like, like essential oil, like, pouches and, like, I like storage things. I'm like, I don't... Yeah. I, if you I don't huge know. essential oil people, please tell us. In and tell us, well, like, what do you, like, what do you use them for, you know, and... But like, is it actually why? backed up? By science. <laughs> like, I think I actually know one of my coworkers quit her job to, uh, 
because she was selling like doTERRA oils or something. Right, doTERRA, yeah. I was like, I don't even know what the, like, I still don't really even know what that is. I'm like, I, yeah. I don't know. There's like different recipes and concoctions that like help with this and help with that. I'm just not sure. I, I'm sure that some of them work. I'm not sure that all of them work. All right. So, so you've got me thinking about it. All right. It says, yeah, uh -huh. one set equals a thousand loads of laundry. You can get four sets for $200. <laughs> All right. Why would you need four sets? I guess maybe if you were gifting it to people, I don't yeah. like Christmas, Christmas gifts for everyone. Crystal, you know what? At least they didn't call it like crystal balls. That would be really like hokey, <laughs> you know, like it, it does your laundry and it reads your fortune. No, no. That'd be, well, thank you for sharing that. This is, I'm intrigued. I, I always love, I love infomercials, like ever since I was a kid. Like I, oh, I enjoy, too. I enjoy yeah. watching them. You know, I bought a Cricket Expression off of one. I oh, think my you? favorite one was that, that guy, Ron Popeil. He was the one that <laughs> sold the cookie, like the rotisserie Showtime oven and like the food dehydrator. Like I always oh, I liked him. Stuff. Yeah. Like I didn't, I never bought it, but I enjoyed watching the, uh, I enjoy watching the, the infomercials. Those are the best. You know, they, they are the best. Okay, so I want to ask, what, um, what are you working on right now sewing-wise? Do you have any projects in the works? Or? Well, okay, so today, oh my gosh, sewing-wise, this is, so every or year. crafting-wise, you're I so know. creative about the crafts. I like, I, you think of these ideas I could never think of. Yeah, I'm pretty good. The only problem that I have is that I never have time to do stuff for myself personally because I'm busy doing work all the time, like crafts for work or sewing for work. I never get to do the things that I like to sew, which are clothes for myself. So I have a whole bunch of projects at home that are like partially completed. Um, and in the sewing world, we call those UFOs, right? Oh yes, unidentified. Oh wait, unfinished objects. Unfinished, unfinished objects. objects. Although it's not really the proper acronym, but yeah, probably not. But we're we're gonna go with it, you know. Um. So yeah, for myself personally, I have a whole bunch of clothes that I haven't completed that I keep on saying I would love to do. Um. And then craft wise, this morning I was on Morning Live in Vancouver showing some DIY fashion accessories. And actually, I should have pulled them out of my suitcase to show you, but um, they I showed how to do a no sew clutch. So it was just pleather and hot glue because when you cut pleather as you know it doesn't Were you inspired work. by that jenna marvel's video oh i know <laughs> we have I to talk about that so, you talk about that you say that. okay so i'm a big fan of jenna marbles uh, she's not the most family friendly youtuber i will put that disclaimer in there so you don't watch with your probably no one under like 15 she probably watch her videos um so she does crafts and she actually does some sewing all the, like she called it Jenna's ratchet sewing boutique or something. Jenna's ratchet fashion boutique. And I guess ratchet means like messed up or like, it's like kind yes. of playing. Um, so she's done some sewing, which I appreciate that such a big YouTuber is at least trying to bring some attention to this area. You know, she yes. does crafting videos, but she brings an element of humor into it. Um, um, so every Christmas I watch her video called drunk Christmas Pinterest crafts or something. So she literally will get drunk and try to craft and it's just funny. Um, so I watch that every year on a loop. Um, she recently did one. There's a channel called five minute crafts, which is a lie because they are not five minute crafts. Um, and she did, she tried out some of the hot glue crafts and found out that it was just not it was not a realistic craft project um and she spent like a lot of money like she spent like a hundred dollars in supplies to make like really crappy looking hot glue crafts she's like yeah. i would have just bought this like don't don't make this stuff yeah um, like i think hot glue is good for some applications but some of these channels like is like yeah i would not make that out of hot glue like yeah. some things are better like a lot of times I see the hacks, whether it's on Pinterest oh or, or YouTube videos. And I'm like, that is, first of all, ridiculous. And oh, second, that wouldn't work. And the one craft that she pointed out that was ridiculous was um, they took like a plate in a tampon and made a <laughs> ring holder. I was like, that is really <laughs> like, like uh, they, they, they separated an, uh, an unused tampon, not a used one. Right. And then Plastic hot glued it to the plate. Exterior. They spray painted it purple or something. 
and that was supposed to be like a ring holder dish. I was like, that. If you're using tampons in your crafts, I don't. I think that's to the point that's a little too out of my no comfort problem. zone. Yeah. Like, not don't use feminine products. Oh, you know what? Maybe we could do something with Maxi. <laughs> uh, no. Actually, I years ago I had this book. I don't even remember the title, but it was like a funny book for women. And it had like all these things you could do with panty liners. Oh no. Like one was like like it was like you cut the you make like a disguise out of it like you use a sharpie and you color it in and then you make like fake eyebrows and a beard or something like it was really weird like i was like yeah i don't it was funny the whole book. yeah well that wasn't the whole book that was just like part of, like that was just like one of the things like it was a very i don't even remember what it was called but it was like a like a funny book for women yeah. like you know, like, say, hey, that sounds like the de- start of the decline of the publishing industry. Yeah, when you're when you're when you're doing DIYs about panty liners, and that's editor is like, check this. Looks yeah, good. and they have like little illustrate, like funny cartoon illustrations, like okay. you know, showing her wearing like the big eyebrows or something. You know, I mean, I, 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 in full disclosure, I do own and buy panty liners frequently, so you know, I, I guess I could try to make some crafts out of that. But would you want to, like? I guess if you don't have paper or felt or yeah, any other item. <laughs> yeah, I've never I've never broken out and used them for any other <laughs> use that was not the intended use. Um, totally. Same thing with tampons. I've never done tampon crafts. I, I, I don't, I don't know if that would be, um, you know what though, years ago, there was a story like from working in this business, you see like every weird news story under the sun. Oh, and man. one of the weirdest ones I saw was a um, a woman in like North Carolina who makes placenta art. Oh, stop. So she has like a couple areas of the business. She did the thing where she used the placenta to make those pills. Like, I guess it's popular for women yes. to make or use placenta pills. Yes. Um, she used a blender. I hope it was a different blender than her like kitchen blender. Like I was, that's the first thing I was like, I hope she has two blenders um, and doesn't, and uses just that one blender for that project. But the other thing she would do is, this is kind of gross and graphic, but she would take dried placentas, dip them in paint and make tree art. I was like, this is, this is a lot to handle. Um, and then by, like, give them to people or just like- Yeah, like it was, she would sell the artwork. I was like, this is- I, and if I can find the story, maybe we can link it in our show notes. But um, um, that was, I was like, that's, that's different. It's very different. Like she would literally take it, like she would, you know, like she was using it as a stamp, basically. Oh, my and I was goodness. like, this is, oh, ew. it was not for me. And the funny thing is the, the, like my coworker who was a guy was the one that initially found the story. Like, and it was interesting. I was like, man, really? I was like, man, Wow. <laughs> okay it was different and that's not even like the like there were other stories like that too and I was like I mean again every you know what I think it's cool she's doing her own thing you know um maybe his wife was pregnant so he was googling a lot of placenta he, he was single so I don't know <laughs> he was um he was single he's since moved on he works at the weather channel now um, so hopefully he's not you know, looking for placenta stories, but I was like, wow, this is a different kind of story here, you know? Um, so yeah. sometimes you run into, I mean, there's always cool people doing cool stuff with art and there's people doing some very unique things with art. Right. Let's call it not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I was like, like the video of her doing it, like was a little like hard. It was a little like hard for me to wrap my mind around. Like, like doing so that. And hers or other people's, would she buy other I people's? think it was other people's like, I don't know, like they would give it to her. Maybe they were getting art made for themselves. I'm not really sure. I've never given birth. So, you know, again, I don't have like a personal connection to that story, you know, at all. I don't. Well, I did save my placenta. <laughs> don't to, judge. To make paintings, but no, I'm just. Saying. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> like that was you in the story. <laughs> You don't recognize me time for Did days. you do that? Like, uh, and I know there aren't there like benefits to doing that. Like you can say. I don't know for sure. Or something. I, yeah. So when, 
you know, when I'm, when you're pregnant, you end up reading tons and tons of stuff. You're in all these different groups, forums, um, all these different books, whatever. So I just started hearing about the benefits of placenta and da, 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 da. And I'm not sure if I ever found out if it's actually backed by science or if just like, if just people say or that. Like just, there were a lot of moms talking about doing it. I don't totally. And there are people who like, they dry it and they put it in pills and they sell it and you can give it to that person to do, or you can, there are DIYs. So I saved it. There are DIYs plus entity. That would be an interesting video for five minute, five minute crafts. If you were, if you want to do something, you know, sensational, that would be it. Yeah. So I did some crafts. We wrapped it up. We put it in plastic. We put it in the freezer and honestly, it stayed in there for years I hate to say it like until we was moved. it in your freezer for years it was in our freezer. Oh my God. I double packed <laughs> I double what did packed. your husband think like every time he would open the freezer and be like well, he knew. I mean it was in the like, bottom corner and he knew and he was just like oh my gosh what are we doing with this but, and I just wasn't sure I'm like I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do anything with it and then eventually we're like okay well it's way past the time like for sure that thing has gone bad and then, do they go bad? I don't, I don't know. If you have the answer out there, let us know. I clearly have no idea. Here's the question, Jen. So when you have a several year old placenta in your freezer, how do you dispose of it? So yeah, that Because was- if like, say somebody finds it, they might think you did something like- I don't know. Questionable, like- I was like, what do we do? Do we just throw it in the garbage? Do I put it in the green bin? Uh, do you guys have green bin? Like the compost, like it's like compost, but it's I've like- I've heard of them. Box. We don't, we don't do it, but I've, I've definitely heard of, I've known people yeah. who do composting. Do you bury it in the backyard? I don't know. Oh, like I can see, yeah. I can see people finding that and then thinking that something, you know, like, like thinking that maybe there was some sort of crime committed or something. Like I can see people kind of wondering about that. Like- yeah. Like was someone murdered? Like, you know, I don't know. That's that's an interesting question. Yeah, so what? Not that is not a dilemma I've ever thought about before. But you've yeah, given you give me remember. so much to think about, Denise. <laughs> I'm gonna spend the rest of my day being like, what would I do? Like, do? I don't know. I think we ended up just tossing it in the garbage. But and you're like, I, yeah, what? I mean, I don't know what you would do with it. I have no idea. Like, do they tell you anything at the hospital? Like, what do they? I did a home birth, actually. Yeah, really? You did yeah. a home birth, like at yeah. your house? At my house, yeah. Oh my Mid- gosh. My house, yeah. I did the real deal. No How medication. Did you do- oh woman. my, oh my gosh. So you were like, this was like, that's a like cavewoman style, like nothing. That's totally. So here's the thing. I always tell people of this. If anybody is like, oh wow, that's so good. Would you do it life. again? Yes, but what I okay. was that I was actually. Um, like I just wasn't knowledge. I didn't think it would hurt that much. Like I, could, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, my body's made for this. I'm a strong woman. Women have been doing this forever. Like they go out into the bushes and give birth to the baby. I'm like, I can do this. This is what my body was made to do. And I just didn't think that it would hurt as much as it did. And it killed, it killed, 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 killed. I would still do it again. It was a great experience. And I had an amazing midwife. And my So no Medicaid, no nothing, just completely. Wow. Like not even like, not even like, like. like Not an Advil or anything. Like, what do you, I don't know what they would give you if you were at home. Like, besides like a bottle of whiskey or something. I don't. Yeah. I I don't know. I do at one point I was in so much pain that I said to my husband I just want to be teleported to the kitchen I want to take a knife and I want to car like cut open my stomach and pull her out like that's how much pain how long were you in labor for only five hours so it was good nice and fast it was a quick relatively and you had a midwife midwife yeah every my mom was there my mom was wow. like around getting towels and she was like she I, she was scared for me I think my whole family was like are you serious like yeah they were like are you not I don't t- think I've ever known anyone that did it at home I think you're the only person I've ever talked to you know what you have to watch watch the Ricky Lake documentary the Ricky Lake doc because she did because I knew she was into that right she did wow. but it's really interesting because she talks about the whole 
business side of births and how they like like the hospitals and yes, it's money making business when you go under c-section when you're in the hospital like it's you're making the somebody's making money so it's very interesting in your did you say do you feel like you saved a lot of money by no you know it wasn't really that it was one of my best friends had done it and she talked about just being in her home after. And I think that was the biggest thing that I didn't want. Like, first of all, I'm a germaphobe. I'm better now that I've had a child, but I was like super yeah. germaphobe. I didn't want to go into a hospital. And you're in a hospital with sick people. Like yeah. it, that does, yeah, like, you know what? I can see that. Totally. I didn't want to bring a fresh baby into the world and have her in a hospital. And then I also didn't want to be around strangers. Like I just wanted yeah. to be, know me myself you know like my husband my mom so, what did your husband think of the whole thing like was he he didn't want to do it for the longest he wanted to- yeah he basically wanted to talk me out of it I was not going to be talked into well, it and what happens like um does like what would happen if someone did that and then they had a complication like what do you is yeah, there a procedure like do you call the hospital then yeah, or like, what you do call you, the hospital you you are um do you tell the hospital like hey I'm going to be doing this so yeah, in I case don't, I have an issue. Yeah, so you met a doctor at the hospital too. Basically, a midwife is like their focus is childbirth and helping you with babies. And if everything goes smoothly, they are in and on their job and perfect and fine. And the minute there's any type of complication, they call in for help. So if everything is going perfectly fine, the midwife is there, she delivers her baby or he, or he and, and everything is, is fine. Um, and then the, you know, if, if there are any issues, they call the ambulance, call wow. the hospital. I had no idea you did that. Like, I'm glad we're doing this podcast. So I was like, you learn new things all the time. You're a stronger woman than I am. I don't think that would be uh, something. Although, um, so my husband had a, um, his, you know, vasectomy. Um, I know we're getting, we're getting real into the weeds. Yeah, here. Yeah, not, yeah. That's why I wanted to do this. It's not just about crafting. It's about life and life is messy people. Yes. Um, and that's funny. You talk about hospitals. Um, so my insurance said that it was going to like, they listed it on a, as a procedure, a sterilization which is kind of funny. Like you're like sterilization. So, um, my insurance was supposed to cover that a hundred percent. So I was like, cool, you know, it's going to be free. I was like, let's, and my husband had actually wanted to get one for a long time. Like even before he met me, he tried to get one and he was denied like when he was like 20 or something. Um, so he had it when he was like 29, I think he was like 29 or 28. Um, so it was a few years ago. And it was not free, let me tell you. So we, we, we went, and it was like an outpatient procedure. Um, I think we paid $1,200 that day. We had insurance and it was supposedly 100% covered. I'm like, what? I was like, what the hell? Like, this is not free. And then we kept getting bills, like these random bills for other stuff for like six months. Uh, you know what I'm like? And I told him, I was like, I think this is a mistake. Like, I don't, he ended up paying them. My husband doesn't like to deal with that So he'd rather just like eat it and then like not, um, but we kept getting all these bills and I was like, it couldn't possibly been that expensive. Like, like what, why do they keep sending it? Like, I thought we were done that day. Was it it like a scam? It what? It wasn't a scam, right? They were coming directly from the hospital. Yeah. It was coming directly from like Wellstar or whatever. Um, you know, it was just very odd. Like, so this whole thing probably ended up costing like 14 or $1,500, you know, which is a lot of money for something that's done in an hour that you have insurance for. And that allegedly was listed on my insurance as being like 100% covered. Because again, that's, we're saving them a lot of money down the line by not having maternity care. Like, you know, like, and that procedure is not a very complicated one. Um, I don't know. I mean, in high, you know, compared to your story though, he said it really was not, um, he said it really was not that big of a deal. Like, you know, well, he he didn't to push a watermelon. Yes. <laughs> but like a lot of guys, a lot of guys are like, yeah, it really hurts. And he did not have, I'm sure it's different for everybody, but he did not have the experience where it was like excruciating right. pain. Um, although funny enough, they give you a pamphlet when you're doing it and it has like, you know, instructions for like what happens after you get home and stuff. And it had all these like little, like, like stick, like line drawn illustrations and it showed a middle-aged man lounging in a recliner and a woman bringing him snacks. I was like, that's oh, pretty God. funny. 
I, I wish I still had it. I think we threw it out. I would like to, like, oh. it was just kind of comical. Like, he's all, like, sitting there back in his Barca lounger, and it's some woman bringing him some food or something. I was like, that's, it was kind of funny. I don't know. So, yeah, that's our opposite story. We, we, we did not do that at home. We didn't have a home vasectomy, though. Maybe that could be a thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt this podcast because Jennifer and I continue talking on and on and on and on. And we decided to take this podcast and split it into two so that you can get to know us and hear our first recording over the course of two different podcasts. So this marks the end of the first one. We want to thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Double the fun, people. Double the fun. (laughs) Double the fun. And we can't wait for you to join us for the next one.